Kevin. How are you? Hey, Steve. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. How's everything been coming along? Uh, you know, everything everything is pretty good. Um, I feel like I'm I'm finally getting into a really good groove that is going to be sustainable. Fantastic. I'm glad to hear it. What would you say is the biggest challenge you're facing right now? Uh, right now, my biggest challenges uh, have to do with timing and also just improving working memory as it relates to my reading comprehension, both for the section and kind of just overall, even in logic games and logic reasoning, I find myself struggling a little bit um, with working memory. Mm -hmm. Have you done anything to try and test it? No. And I think that that's kind of what I need to do and would love some of your suggestions on. Sure. How's your working memory in logic games? Um, it's, it's usually okay, but every now and then I find myself making a slip up where, you know, if I do misinterpret a rule, it's just because I wrote down the wrong letter when I was diagramming, things like that that are so simple, but I'm noticing I'm doing now and then. Okay. So in that case, misinterpretation, what's the solution? Uh, misinterpretate, I mean, and, and to solve that, I usually just, um, make sure that after I write out the diagrams or everything for the rules, I'm checking them once over again. Um, and just taking the, you know, extra couple seconds it takes to do that obviously saves you a lot of time if you're not going to, you know, waste a ton of time with an error. Right. So you essentially, you double check, right? Mm-hmm. What about in reading comprehension? What's, what do you do there in terms of absorbing information? Uh, I, I try and take a pause after every paragraph that I read to make sure I have a two to three word kind of summary um, to remember what information I want to come back to. And I, I experiment for at some times I was writing down on a scratch paper um, the gist of the paragraph, but I'm trying to move away from that because I think it was sort of serving as a crutch and not really helping. Okay. Okay. Have you experimented with not writing down anything? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm starting to do. And I think it's, um, I think it's working better. Have you ever tried doing a mental double check? Uh, no. Well, what would that be? Well, let's say for example, if you were, taking a couple of words as your articulation of what was happening in a particular paragraph, let's say. So let's say there's three to four paragraphs in a passage and you come up with a couple of key words related to each of those paragraphs. So you have a mental checklist. You run through these four paragraphs, have these four concepts. Mm -hmm. Then you run through it again and you make sure was that concept actually in that paragraph. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, that, that sounds like a great thing that I can try. And we could see if it is an issue of misinterpretation and misremembering or potentially just going blank on it. Mm -hmm. They have different consequences. If you misinterpret, that's, in my view, enormously problematic because then you can confidently choose something wrong. Right. If you just don't remember, well, the solution would then just be to go back. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Then there's the question of whether you even need to improve the short-term memory, the work memory in reading comprehension, or could you have an alternative strategy where you just go back a lot? Yeah, that's definitely what I do right now is that I go back a lot and I kind of, you know, after I've done my initial read, quickly read the chunk really quickly. Um, and, but I don't know, I just, because I am generally running out of time, I wonder if that is not the best strategy for me. But I don't know, I guess it's going to take some more trial and error. Exactly. I mean, reading comprehension, there's different valid methods. Mm -hmm. And the key is just to experiment and see what feels good and what gets you the most points. Right, right. Personally, I like to go back a lot. I like to confirm little details. Okay. Other people may feel confident in everything they got up front and they don't make mistakes and don't need to go back as much. So you do think that there is a, 
a path for success that involves going back frequently. Yeah, there is a path for that. And that's my personal path. I go back a lot for things to confirm little details. But what makes that work for me is I can quickly scan and find the key words and phrases I need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And that's what I'm trying to do. I do uh, like the highlighter tool. I know <laughs> maybe it's a little bit too slow, um, but it, when, you know, when there's a really convoluted sentence, I like that I can just highlight the core of what that sentence is, and it makes it so much easier to come back and remember what the paragraph was trying to say. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a personal strategy style, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. As long as it works for you and you've tested it under timed conditions and it, it goes smoothly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll keep testing it out. Awesome. Awesome. What else is going on for you? So right now I am, uh, I finally had my first breakthrough this past weekend where I got into the low 160s after months of being in the mid 150s. Um, and, you know, of course, I know this isn't exactly linear progress, but I'm still taking the win and pressing forward. Um, and I, I've gotten through um, a lot of the two month curriculum that you sent out. Um, I had already taken a Manhattan prep course before, so I didn't as diligently go through all your lessons, but I'm using them to reference, but I'm really appreciate the structure of um, the time sections doing just uh, sec questions uh, specific question types in, in a row, especially for logical reasoning. Um, and so it's all good. I think I'm at the point where I just need to do as many time sections as possible because I'm still, uh, I'm not as good with my timing as I wish I was. I'm in all the sections, I'm still kind of rushing through or guessing on the last, let's say three to five. Um, and I think I really need to get over that next, especially like in logical reasoning, I feel like I have great accuracy, except for the ones that I'm rushing through. And that's where I'm getting five wrong. Um, and if I could turn that five into a three, you know, that would totally change my score. Yeah. So that's a thing to work on with pacing. And just to make sure in logical reasoning, for example, you can blast through the easy ones, have a time bank built up for tougher ones later. And the same is true of other sections as well. There is an order, general order of difficulty, but in logical reasoning, it's a lot more apparent. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's funny. I'm finding with reading comp and logic games that I'm better off just kind of going start to finish. When I, I've tried things like, oh, do the one that has the most questions because that has the most points associated with it and somehow it just always chokes me up i don't know why i'm better off just doing those earlier easier questions with a fresh brain and getting all those points um but then logical reasoning is where i am varying it up more and i'm if i know that i struggle on a question i'm just skipping it and leaving it to the end even if it's kind of early um so yeah, that's the current strategy. And that's fine. That sounds perfectly fine to me. The question is just doing enough timed sections and timed exams, getting them under your belt so that it feels smooth for you to go about it that way. And that mm -hmm. you can execute on that on test day just the same as a practice. Mm -hmm. What's your target test date? I think February. Um, I say I think just because I've been so hesitant about it because I'm not willing to apply till next fall. So I'm, you know, I'm giving myself the time to do whatever it takes. Um, that requires a year until, you know, I, I started studying in June. So, you know, if that's the worst case, so be it. You know, I have, I have no issues with that. Um, but I, th I think at the same time, I need to give myself a firm date to work towards, or I'm just gonna keep pushing it off. <laughs> that's understandable. That's understandable. And you can orient your prep around gearing up for February. And hey, since you have time, if you since you're applying next cycle, that that means is that you could go for February. If in the week or two prior, your scores are not where you want to be, or you encounter that situation earlier, and you say, you know, it's just not going to happen, you can make the decision to postpone or withdraw and go for mm -hmm. April or for June instead. And that'd be totally fine. But there obviously is a certain appeal to being done with it sooner if you can get your score 
high enough in the lead up? Yeah, that's, that's the question. How much progress can I make in two months? I mean, it sounds like a long time, so we'll see. Um, another thing I'd love your uh, input on is I have a unique situation the next two weeks where my employer has given us an extended holiday break. Um, so I'll have off from the 19th as a Saturday and then coming back the January 4th. Um, and so I feel like this is my time to just get in so many practice tests and hopefully, you know, use that to make a jump. Uh, do you have any advice on how you would try and structure that? Yeah, sure. And it's based on you feeling confident in your general foundation. I'd recommend doing on average two timed exams a week along with detailed review of those exams. And so really use this time to own the Socratic review method and engage in it for every question that you get wrong and every question that gives you difficulty. And you're setting up the foundation for your review process such that you can continue it even once you start work again. That makes sense. So really making sure that I'm doing the review for every single question. Well, every question that you get wrong, get wrong. or have yeah. difficulty with. Yeah. yeah. So that could be somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 questions after you mm -hmm. do a timed exam. And you'll see what seems manageable for you. If taking it on for 50 questions could seem overwhelming, then maybe there are some where it isn't truly necessary to go as in-depth in the review as for other questions. But mm -hmm. the reviews where you're going to learn from your mistakes, not just make the mistakes and measure the mistakes, but really to learn from them so that next time you encounter a similar problem, not just similar question type, but perhaps in logical reasoning, similar method of reasoning or similar topic, whatever threw you off, you can address uh -huh. that going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds really good. Yeah, of course. Anything else for today, Kevin? No, I think, uh, I think those are the big things I wanted to address and I kind of appreciate all your input. Yeah, of course. No, I'm glad to help and we'll continue working through the Socratic review method in class. And so that'll give you some ideas about how to go about it on your own. And if you have any questions or suggestions, definitely feel free to reach out. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, definitely. Steve. Of course, I'll see you in class. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.